our crew patch it indicates that we also are the name of our crew members plus uh, Koichi, our upgoing uh, shuttle rotating crew member. And that patch was designed by our uh, Caroline Swanson, daughter of uh, Steve Swanson. And there's what the uh, space station looked like before we got there. You can see it's a little bit uh, not symmetrical. We need to add another solar array. And there's the uh, the happy uh, uh, team up on the International Space Station, uh, led by Commander Mike Fink, uh, Sandy Magnus, and Yuri Longikov. A quick uh, little cartoon of us uh, installing the uh, S6 truss and then uh, unfolding those solar arrays. The night before we were supposed to launch, we had just an absolute gorgeous shot. This is really a picture. This is not uh, any Photoshop here. This is a no kidding picture, really pretty. About uh, a little over four hours before launch, we all get suited up in the uh, suit room at the uh, uh, Kennedy Space Center. Here's our pilot, Tony Antonelli, getting psyched for his first mission. Steve Swanson, I flew with Swanee on STS-117, a real honor to fly with him a second time. Here's Big Joe. Joe did some uh, robotics work. He was a part of our EVA team. There's Ricky, another EVA uh, team member, and John, uh, John Phillips, uh, third time in space, uh, twice in a shuttle. John was our robotics operator, and there's Koichi Wakata. Marching out, or marching out to the... Uh, Astro van, and we're uh, this again right around four hours prior to uh, 345 prior to launch, about a six mile drive out to the pad, and then uh, about three hours and 15 minutes we start the entry process. A uh, little bit of a trick to get up on the uh, flight deck seats, particularly the commander and pilot seat. And while I'm jumping in there, we got other guys re getting ready to jump in right behind us. It takes about 45 to 50 minutes to get all seven uh, crew members loaded up in the vehicle. You can see here's uh, some work uh, being done on the mid-deck, the three mid-deck riders getting strapped in by George Brittingham. And there's uh, our flight deck uh, crew, Steve Swanson, the last guy to get his helmet on. He, he lucked out. He's only on his back for about two hours. Discovery Launch Director. Launch Director, go ahead for Discovery. Okay, Brew, well, you had a little bit of a wait, but uh, that'll just make the payoff that much sweeter. So on behalf of the KC launch and processing teams, good luck and Godspeed. Uh, thanks, Mike, and congratulations to you and the entire team for getting Discovery ready for a 36 mission. And, you know, it's truly really an honor to be part of this team, representing all of NASA, our nation, and the international partners. Uh, thanks for the work, Mike. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Take care, and uh, let's go ahead and put up the zone of freedom. Copy that, Bruce. Thank you very much. A and very anxious uh, space station team. Discovery. Copy, clear to launch. Thank you. About seven minutes, they moved the white room out of the way on the swing arm. About five minutes prior, we uh, fire up the APUs, and three and a half minutes, uh, we do yeah, engine, engine gimbal check. Lock your visors and initiate O2 flow. That's in work. About two minutes prior to flight, we remove the O2 vent, uh, which we call the mini cap. 15. 12. 10. 11. Go for main engine start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And boost recognition and lift off of Space Shuttle Discovery, taking the space station to full power for full science. Houston Discovery Roll Program. I didn't see the roll. Copy. Roger Roll Discovery. See our mission control team in that lower right inset. Those uh, solid rocket boosters are with us for about two minutes, and when they finally. Discovery, go and throw up. And after about two minutes, when we get rid of those solid rocket boosters, we're at about 150,000 feet going Mach 5. So they did their job. They boosted us away from the Earth, and now it's just all about acceleration from there on in. Things become very quiet in the uh, space shuttle at this time when all we've got is the three main engines uh, burning. And those uh, three main engines will continue to burn for about six and a half minutes. At around the four-minute point, we're going to peak out at around 365,000 feet. And as I say, it's all about accelerating out to uh, Mach 25. It's actually 25,820 feet per second. And so those three main engines are going to get us there. Main engine cutoff is confirmed. Sandy never really believed we were going to get there until that moment. Discovery. Houston, nominal Miko, Ohms 1, not required. So it was a fi fun eight and a half minute ride to orbit, but, uh, not required. but there is uh, no time to rest. We've got a very busy day ahead of us for the next six and a half hours, so we've got to get right to work. 
It's, um, uh, the uh, cockpit, both the flight deck as well as the mid-deck, immediately become a beehive of activity. Got to get the uh, helmets off. Joe's in a good mood. He's, uh, he's zero-G for the first time in his life. There's Tony. Commander's pretty excited to still be there. <laughs> Swanee is always excited. <laughs> Down in the mid-deck, uh, you can see these guys have got to get out of their seats in a hurry. They're gonna, those, these three guys are going to help turn the whole uh, vehicle around and uh, reconfigure ourselves for uh, a, a spacecraft for, uh, to uh, live on for a couple of weeks. So a lot of excited guys, but we've got to get right to work. In the meantime, both uh, myself and the uh, pilot are going to go ahead and uh, get set up for what's called an Ohm's 2 burn. That happens around 37 minutes into flight, and this is a small burn. You can see uh, that's what it looks like in the mid-deck when that Ohm's 2 burn kicks off. And we've got those two Ohm's engines, each 6,000 pounds of thrust, uh, going to burn for a couple of minutes. And what that's going to do is it's going to circularize our orbit. Almost one complete rev around the Earth, uh, basically when we're flying right out back over here, over Houston, after one, almost one complete revolution, we're going to go up ahead and open those payload bay doors. And this is a uh, very critical moment. This is what clears us for uh, orbit ops when we get those payload bay doors open. All right, that was a busy flight day one. We get up on uh, flight day two, and uh, we'll use the robotic arm and the boom with some cameras and lasers on the end and take a look at Discovery, uh, both the, w the wings and the crew cabin and the nose, make sure uh, she's looking okay after uh, ascent. Also, uh, the mid-deck guys are busy getting their uh, spacesuits ready. They check them out on flight day two, make sure they'll be ready for uh, spacewalking on flight day five. Ends up being a uh, pretty busy day, and then on flight day three, uh, it's time to uh, rendezvous with the station. Uh, we do a few burns uh, from the front, and uh, this is what, again, another view of the station as we're coming up from uh, below and behind. John's uh, shooting a laser beam at the International Space Station, and uh, Bruce in the back, uh, hand flying the space shuttle. Ricky's doing what he does best pushing a button. <laughs> it's not as easy as it looks. This is us uh, about 600 feet uh, directly underneath the space station. Uh, view in the upper left there from the space station looking down at us and then uh, us looking through our payload bay. Brew, for those of you that don't know, Brew's uh, hand flying this and uh, we'll slow the video down here in just a second and you can see uh, how well of a job he does by uh, how centered up the space station comes up uh, right along the tail. See the space station starting to come up along the sides and uh, you'll be able to tell he did such a great job flying it, you can't even see the uh, center of the station in the view there, it's uh, right up the center of the tail. Once we complete this uh, flip underneath, uh, Brew will drive us up uh, out in front of the space station. There's a view of the mission control team and the displays they're looking at. In the view, you can see the, us, the space shuttle discovery, just out in front of the space station. You can see the target there on the right. You can see the cross perfectly centered in the circle there as uh, Brew flies us in and, uh, and docks with the space station. We had to slow this down a little bit so, uh, so you could be able to watch it in film. This is the results of uh, Ricky pushing the button. <laughs> and you can see uh, Quatsy's happy. <laughs> Brew gets the hatch open. Here on the afternoon of flight day three, and we were wondering if the space station guys were going to be excited to see us. They were right there on the other side of the hatch, ready to, ready to greet us. Space shuttle Discovery arriving. All right, we get a uh, get a, just a minute for uh, greetings, and then a uh, quick safety brief.
but we got a long day ahead of us. So let's get to work. <laughs> so the next morning on flight day four, we did get to work. Here's uh, Sandy and I moving that 16 pound truss out of the payload bay using the space station uh, robotic arm with Brew helping us out from the, uh, from the flight deck. And here you see a picture of the truss coming out of the payload bay and we're gonna flip it around and get it in a position to hand it off to the space shuttle arm driven here by uh, Tony and Joe, who are then gonna move it to another position. And in the meantime, while they're grappling the truss, or w while they're moving the truss, the ground is gonna move the railroad cart that the station arm rides on so we can grab it back from them and put it to bed for the night. Meanwhile, the EVA guys have spent the night in the airlock and uh, Tony and Mike are getting ready to, well, they've got them suited up and they're going through all their checks. This is the next morning and Koichi and I are moving the truss with the space station arm to its, uh, near its final position. While uh, Tony and Mike are keeping working, getting Ricky and Swanee out the door on the first of our three EVAs. This is a view of the space station airlock hatch from outside as they, as they open the thermal cover. In the second view, Swanee's outside and Ricky's uh, in view through the hatch and he's coming on up, out. And then as soon as they got out, they scampered up to the S5 truss. S5 is where we're gonna install the S6 truss. And here we have uh, Swanee coming up on S5 and in the top of the picture, you, you see the claw, which is gonna grab the S6 truss. And here's the, 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 the gap between the two trusses as we're driving it in. There's Koichi and I in the inset driving it in with a robot arm. And once the claw had, had, um, had uh, grappled it and dragged it in, the, um, the EVA guys still had a lot of work to do to configure the truss. They folded out the blanket boxes and what's called the beta gimbal assembly. In other words, all the support structure for the truss, uh, for the solar blankets themselves. And now the ground has commanded a deployment of the photovoltaic radiator that keeps all the electronics cold. Um, then the EVA guys were just about done. The radiator's deployed, and the next scene you'll see us, uh, you'll see a happy uh, joint EVA and robotics crowd after a long but successful day. Then the next day, uh, flight day uh, six, was a moment of high drama as we uh, deployed the solar uh, arrays, uh, some of which had been in the box for nearly eight years. We had a beautiful plan that was put together by the ground, uh, the Falcon team, and they did a lot of the commanding, and then the crew did some as well. You can see the whole crew here on the space station robotics workstation area. Every one of us had a job to do, and the plan went really well. You see me there with my finger on the abort button, but I never had to push it. We had a great plan. It went smoothly, and we brought the station to full power. Well, besides the S6 and solar array tasks, EVA crew members had other tasks to complete. Here, Joe's working on pulling that UCAS up into the very robust detent position. And here's from my helmet cam looking out. You can see Joe working away on the diagonal brace beam. And again, here I am on the uh, UCAS working on tying it down. And Joe got to take a ride. We moved the CETA cart from the port side to the starboard side. And uh, Quichi's driving this. It's like a fast Japanese sports car here. <laughs> but Joe says he couldn't feel a thing the whole time. And here, Ricky's working on his skills to be a mechanic. He's lubing the latching end effector of the station robotic arm. And you can see the, the uh, fruits of his labor there as the snares open and close. And then our EV tasks were done, and it was time to come on in. And again, we had a happy crew after the end of each EVA. Everybody was pretty happy. It went well. And uh, Tony's job and Quichi's job, of course, to get us undressed at that moment. Besides working in space, of course, we had to live there. So here's Brew getting in his sleeping bag. He had the suite up on the flight deck. <laughs> and you can see the rest of the crew down below kind of <laughs> bundled all together. It's a standard morning breakfast. 
Of course, as you can see, it's a little hard to keep control of all your food and space here. I think Ricky loses some oatmeal here. <laughs> Here's our galley where we rehydrate the food and get water. And most of the time, the water does go in the bags. And this is the oven. And you can see just flu start, food starts coming out once you open it up. So you grab the uh, one that looks the best and start eating. <laughs> and brew, playing with food as usual. And one night we had dinner over in the Russian segment. We had Russian food along with Japanese food. It was all very tasty. As you can see, it comes in cans. There are pork, beef, and fish. I like them all, however, I couldn't tell the difference between any of them. <laughs> Here's Joe trying to look good. <laughs> and Queechy needed no help. He always looked good. <laughs> we also had some repair work to do. Our bike broke on us from the first day. And here's John and Tony working on it. They repaired it on flight day five. And from then on, it worked great. We also had transfer ops. As you can see, it's a little easier to move bags up in space. <laughs> we also had to work out. Here Ricky's on the newly fixed bike on the shuttle. Joe's on the station bike. And you can see there are aliens in space. And Brew is on the new resistive, resistive exercise device that some of us got to use. <laughs> and here he is doing his uh, deadlifts. And Yuri's on the treadmill back in the service module. I think we pitched up to give him a hill to climb here. There's a little translation through. That's always a fun thing. Here's Ricky trying to herd some M&Ms into his mouth. <laughs> oh, <took> an hour. <laughs> Again, translations are just fun to do. <laughs> Doesn't matter where you're going, just do it. <laughs> John's doing the physics experiments. Of course, there's not many classes where you actually get to drink your experiment. <laughs> Here's one we just chanced upon. We happened to hit this one time and noticed this wheel floating there. I thought that was a good experiment, a rotational stability. And Tony's practicing some uh, space darts. <laughs> Unsuccessfully. Uh, this is uh, taking out the gem window. Uh, we had to slow this one down too as well. But this is uh, really a view where you uh, wish you could take uh, all of you folks up with us to have a look. Um, watching the arrays follow the sun and this is a day in space. And uh, almost as nice as watching the, out the window during the day is uh, watching cities, thunderstorms and the aurora at night. And uh, we had a special phone call while we were there. Discovery International Space Station, the President of the United States. Hello, Commander. Can you hear us? President, welcome aboard the International Hello, Space Station. We hear you loud and clear, sir. President spent about uh, 20 minutes asking us questions as, long as, as well as some uh, students. And we appreciate you guys. So uh, look forward to seeing you when you're back on the ground. God bless you and seemed really excited to hear what we were doing. Um, Sandy, uh, our last transfer operation was getting Sandy on the right side of the hatch. Uh, we really had to drag her. She was disappointed to be leaving. <laughs> <laughs> and it was uh, soon time to say uh, goodbye to Koichi. 
and Spanky. Brew closed up the hatch. And uh, we started getting ready to fly away. And uh, here's the special buttons I got to push. And uh, pretty soon it's the station jettison button. So with those words from the space station crew, we were on our way. It was a pretty exciting moment for all of us, not just because we were on our way home, but also because we were going to have the opportunity to look out that window and get a view of what this whole team really worked for, which was getting the truss up there and the solar array wing deployed. So we start heading out here. The flight control team did a great job of uh, working our timeline. So as we started to back away, and Tony's flying here, we're all on the uh, flight deck. As we start to uh, get further and further away and we start approaching approximately 400 feet, the sun comes up and we start to get our first glimpse of the work that everybody has been uh, working so hard to get done. And it was quite an impressive view and there was a lot of uh, fighting for window space up there. <laughs> And you see the shuttle uh, shadow going across the station there on the left. And as Tony did a great job flying us around, we start going out to about 600 feet. And Quachi did a good job having everything lined up. But at this point, things are starting to get back to normal and putting these solar array wings back to work. It was quite a spectacular view. I know I wasn't the only one thinking, hey, can we do another spin around the block and maybe uh, <laughs> do this one more time? But it was time for us to come home. And here, Swanee's working on closing the payload bay doors, really a, a closing event for us as we get ready to come back home. Mid-deck crew getting us all suited up, ready to go. Smiles all around. And this next guy here, I've never seen him smile so much. Actually, he smiled for about 12 days. <laughs> So we're getting ready to go, one last spin before we head out, and we get ourselves strapped in, and we're getting ready for the burn. Brew that uh, he's go for the deorbit burn. Discovery Houston, you are go for the deorbit burn. Discovery, go for the orbit burn. I think in the background there, there was a little yoo hooing going on. We were pretty happy to be coming home. Uh, we had to wave off on our first attempt, so Richard, we appreciate you getting us back. And you can see the egg timer there floating as we get ready for the burn. <laughs> and the next thing you know, gravity's starting to take charge. Uh, here we are at about 0.1 Gs. And we start working up to about 0.4, and things are starting to get real heavy. Very nice day at the uh, Kennedy Space Center. A little bit breezy, but it uh, turned out to be a very good day. We got her back down. Space shuttle was a, uh, just a joy to fly. It, we had a lot of great training from our SDA crews that, that, that gave us thousands and thousands of practice attempts. You know, I was telling Tony, uh, we had practiced this in the SDA probably 1,500 or 2,000 times, but uh, this is the only one that counted. You can see we popped the chute, uh, uh, let us slow down, but uh, we really didn't even need it that day. With the strong headwinds, uh, we just basically came to a glide almost without even touching the brakes. Houston Discovery will stop. Houston copies will stop. Welcome home, Discovery, after a great mission to bring the International Space Station to full power. So it takes us about an hour, hour and a half to get out of the vehicle, get our uh, blue suits uh, on, and uh, come back out and do a nice walk around the, of the uh, Space Shuttle Discovery. It's a beautiful sight to see there on the runway. It was a very happy crew, and uh, I think we had a lot of good, happy folks at the Kennedy Space Center just appreciated us getting it back to uh, Florida this time. And that is it.
the night before we were supposed to launch, we had just an absolute gorgeous shot. This is really a picture. This is not uh, any Photoshop here. This is a no kidding picture, really pretty. <laughs> About uh, a little over four hours before launch, we all get suited up in the uh, suit room at the uh, uh, Kennedy Space Center. Here's our pilot, Tony Antonelli, getting psyched for his first mission. Steve Swanson, I flew with Swanee on STS-117, a real honor to fly with him a second time. There's Big Joe. Joe did some uh, robotics work. He was a part of our EVA team. There's Ricky, another EVA uh, team member. And John, uh, John Phillips, uh, third time in space, uh, twice in a shuttle. John was our robotics operator. And there's Koichi Wakata. Marching out, or marching out to the uh, Astro van, and we're, uh, this again, right around four hours prior to, uh, 3.45 prior to launch, about a six-mile drive out to the pad. And then uh, about three hours and 15 minutes, we start the entry process. A uh, little bit of a trick to get up on the uh, flight deck seats, particularly the commander and pilot seat. And while I'm jumping in there, we got other guys re getting ready to jump in right behind us. It takes about 45 to 50 minutes to get all seven uh, crew members loaded up in the vehicle. You can see here's uh, some work uh, being done on the mid deck. The three mid deck riders getting strapped in by George. Our crew patch indicates uh, we also our, the name of our crew members plus uh, Koichi, our upgoing uh, shuttle rotating crew member. And that patch was designed by our uh, Caroline Swanson, daughter of uh, Steve Swanson. And there's what the uh, space station looked like before we got there. You can see it's a little bit uh, not symmetrical. We need to add another solar array. And there's the, uh, the happy uh, uh, team up on the International Space Station uh, led by Commander Mike Fink, uh, Sandy Magnus, and Yuri Longikov. A quick uh, little cartoon of us uh, installing the uh, S6 truss, and then uh, unfolding those solar arrays. Take care, and uh, let's go ahead and fire up the zone of freedom. Copy that, Bruce. Thank you very much. And A very anxious uh, space station team. Discovery. Copy, clear to launch. Thank you. About seven minutes, they moved the white room out of the way on the swing arm. About five minutes prior, we uh, fire up the APUs, and three and a half minutes, uh, we do yeah, engine, engine gimbal check. Close the lock advisors and initiate O2 flow. Work. About two minutes prior to flight, we removed the O2 vent, uh, which we call the mini cap. 15. 12. 10. Brittingham. And there's uh, our flight deck uh, crew, Steve Swanson, last guy to get his helmet on. He, he lucked out. He's only on his back for about two hours. Discovery launch director. Launch director, go ahead for discovery. Okay, Brew, well, you had a little bit of a wait, but uh, that'll just make the payoff that much sweeter. So on behalf of the KC launch and processing teams, good luck and Godspeed. Well, thanks, Mike, and congratulations to you and the entire team for getting Discovery ready for the 36th mission. And, you know, it's truly really an honor to be part of this team, representing all of NASA, our nation, and the international partners. Uh, thanks for the work, Mike. We'll see you in a couple of weeks.